Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're looking into something that could totally change the way we think about payments. Oh yeah. Unstoppable payments. Interesting. You know how annoying it is when transactions get declined uh -huh. or there are delays and all those other payment issues? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, just imagine a world where those problems just disappear completely. Wow. Remember Derek's card getting declined at that coffee shop? Oh, yeah. Unstoppable payments are aiming to make those situations a thing of the past. Like completely gone. Hopefully. So what's really interesting about this is that it's not about creating a whole new payment system. Right. It's about using blockchain technology to make the systems we already use even better. Okay, so like Visa, MasterCard, and yeah. Swift. Yeah. Uh, okay, I am intrigued. Mm -hmm. But how do these unstoppable payments actually work? Imagine sending a text. Okay. Once you hit send, it's gone right. Right. No stopping it. Yeah. And it gets to the other person's phone instantly. Unstoppable payments work in a similar way. Okay. By using the blockchain once a transaction starts, yeah. it's pretty much guaranteed to go through. Yeah. Okay. There's no middleman to interfere or delay it or block it. So it's like going around all the usual roadblocks and red tape. Exactly. That sounds incredibly efficient. But what does that actually mean for me as a user? What are the benefits I would see? Well, first of all, no more transaction decline messages. Okay. This technology adds a whole new level of reliability and certainty to your financial transactions. That's great. You also have the freedom to choose your preferred settlement network. Okay. And you can even set your own IAN address. IAN address. What is that? It stands for Interbank Atomic Network Address. Okay. It's a unique identifier that lets you be a part of this new streamlined payment system. Gotcha. Think of it as your own special address just for unstoppable payments. Okay. It gives you more security and control over your transactions. So more control. Yes. Transactions are pretty much guaranteed to go through. Pretty much. And I have this new INN address. Right. What else can I do with unstoppable payments? The beauty of it is the flexibility. Uh -huh. You can set up recurring payments yeah. and be totally confident that they'll go through without any problems. Okay. Splitting bills with friends becomes easy, even with that one friend who always forgets their wallet. Oh, yeah, I know that friend. You even have options for fiat conversions, expiration dates, and more. That's amazing. It really gives you the power. Okay, I have one more question. I've heard about instant settlement. Oh, yeah. And that sounds like a game changer. Definitely. Can you tell me what ICANN Settlement is? Sure. And how it makes payments so incredibly fast. ICANN Settlement stands for Instantaneous and Censorship Resistant Atomic Network Settlement. Huh. It takes the speed and reliability of unstoppable payments to a whole new level. Wow. For smaller amounts, settlements happen instantly. Really? Like flipping a switch. That's incredible. And even for larger transfers, we're talking about near instantaneous settlement. Within seconds. Wait, within seconds. That's just mind-blowing. No more waiting for transfers to clear. Nope. No more wondering if the payment actually went through. That's right. You mentioned censorship resistance earlier. Yes. What exactly does that mean when we're talking about payments? Remember how we talked about unstoppable payments being like sending a text? Yeah. Censorship resistance is like a guarantee that your message will reach its destination no matter what. Okay. No one can stop it, block it, or change it along the way. Wow. It's about making sure your financial transactions really are unstoppable. Uh -huh. It gives you a level of control that you just don't get with traditional systems. So even if hypothetically yes. there was some kind of major disruption or interference, my payment would still go through. That's the idea. That's amazing. That level of security and peace of mind is something I've never experienced with traditional payment systems. It's pretty revolutionary. It is. <laughs> and here's where it gets even more interesting. Okay. ICANN Settlement can even work without an internet connection. Seriously. Thanks to something called the Luna Mesh Network. Payments can be made through NFC, TAPS, QR codes, or even just clicking a button. Hold on. Are you saying I could be in a remote location? Yes. Completely off the grid uh, and still send and receive payments. That's right. That sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. It might sound futuristic, but it's a reality with this technology. That's incredible. It has the potential to reach people who aren't served well by traditional financial systems, right. giving them new levels of financial access and inclusion. This all sounds revolutionary, but I have to ask, what's happening behind the scenes to make all this possible? 
What's the driving force behind this payment revolution? At the heart of it all is core blockchain. Okay. It's the infrastructure that makes sure everything runs smoothly, securely, and efficiently. So core blockchain is like the foundation, the underlying technology that makes unstoppable payments and ICANN settlement possible. Exactly. It's amazing how everything is interconnected. It is. And I understand the team behind core blockchain is constantly working to improve it. Oh yeah, they're always working on it. They're making advancements in the Rust client. Yeah. Developing things called crates for better management and interoperability. Uh -huh. They're also revisiting the random EY implementation to keep up with the latest technology. That's right. So it's not just about creating these new features. Right. It's also yeah. about continuously improving and future-proofing the underlying technology. Exactly. That's really impressive. But what does all that technical stuff actually mean for the average user? It means you can have confidence that core blockchain is built to last. Okay. These ongoing developments ensure that it can handle the increasing demands of a decentralized future. So it's built for the long haul. Yes. And it's the foundation for WM 2.0. That's right. Which will be able to work with many different programming languages. This will open up so many possibilities for developers and users. Definitely. WM 2.0. What exactly is that? It's the next generation of the platform that powers all of this. Okay. It's designed to be more versatile, more powerful and even easier for developers to use. Sounds very exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the financial side of things, mm -hmm. but I'm curious about other areas where this technology is making an impact. What's the cool factor beyond payments? Well, one area where we're seeing some really interesting things is 3D printing. 3D printing. Now, that's not something I expected. It's pretty cool. I know 3D printing is awesome on its own, but how does it fit into this whole decentralized world we've been discussing? It's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible when you combine real objects with blockchain technology. Yeah. Imagine creating objects that have a digital identity on the blockchain, objects that can interact with decentralized applications, uh -huh. and even play a role in transactions. Wait, so you're saying we could 3D print objects that aren't just gadgets, but are also digital assets on the blockchain. That's the idea. That's amazing. Yeah. What kind of things are we talking about printing? Things like NFC tags. Okay. Decentralized storage holders. Even crypto models. Interesting. But it's not just about the novelty of printing these objects. Right. It's about how they function in a decentralized world. So it's not just cool gadgets. Nope. It's about creating a physical link mm -hmm. between the physical and digital worlds. Mm -hmm with 3D printing as the bridge. Exactly. That's a really cool concept. It is. And it's just the beginning. The teams are also designing 3D printed IoT devices, which fits into this idea of a decentralized future. It's not just about gadgets, it's a whole way of life. Exactly. This is amazing, but who's actually building all of this? I mean, it sounds so complex. It's a... Are we talking about teams of geniuses working around the clock? There are definitely a lot of talented developers involved, yeah. and to help them, there's a new DAP framework that's becoming really popular. Okay. It's called SmeltKit. SmeltKit. I've yeah. heard the name, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. What makes it so special for these developers? Two things. Okay. Security and ease of use. Got it. SmeltKit is designed to be super secure, which is crucial when dealing with sensitive data in decentralized apps. Yeah, that makes sense. But what really makes it a game changer is how easy it is to use. Oh, wow. It's intuitive and easy to learn, even for developers who are new to dApps. So you're telling me that someone with limited coding experience could use FeltKit to build their own decentralized applications. That's right. That's amazing. It seems like this could open up the world of blockchain development to a much wider audience. Absolutely. Okay, so SvelteKit makes building dApps easier. Yes. But how does it connect with all the hardware and blockchain infrastructure? Think of SvelteKit as a bridge. Okay. It allows for smooth communication between decentralized hardware and the blockchain infrastructure. Wow. It allows all these parts to work together, yeah, yeah. making the development process much smoother. So it's like the glue that holds everything together. Exactly. Now let's talk about the Foxar Dev Toolkit. Sure. I understand it's really important for building smart contracts on core blockchain. That's right. But hold on a second. For those of us who aren't developers, yeah. can you explain what a smart contract is? Of course. And why are they so important? Think of a smart contract as a self-executing agreement written in code. Okay. 
It would automatically enforces the terms of the agreement when certain conditions are met. So no more middlemen. That's right. And everything is transparent and automated. Exactly. I can see how that would be revolutionary for payments and financial transactions. It definitely has the potential. So the FoxR Dev Toolkit makes it easier to build these smart contracts. Yeah, it integrates with the CBC 20 standard. CBC 20 standard, what's that? It's a set of rules okay. and guidelines that make sure smart contracts on core blockchain are secure, reliable, and can work with other systems. Got it. And it comes with all the tools a developer needs, from contract templates to deployment scripts. So this toolkit is like a one-stop shop. You could say that. For building. Yeah testing and deploying these smart contracts on core blockchain. It's been compared to a Swiss army knife for DAP developers. That's amazing. All this talk about development and infrastructure is really fascinating. It is. But it's a lot to take in. Is there anything in this decentralized world that's a little more user-friendly? Something for us non-developers to get excited about? Absolutely. Okay, great. Let's talk about the block index. Block index. They're currently designing a major overhaul. with Some really cool new features. I've heard the term before. But to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what it is or why I should care. Can you break it down for me? Sure. What's all the fuss about? The block index is basically a record of everything happening on the blockchain. Okay. It's like a giant library with information about transactions, blocks, token names, you name it. Okay. And with these new features, it's going to be even more powerful and easy to use. Okay, now I'm listening. What kind of new features are we talking about? Well, they're improving the search options. Yeah. Making it easier to find the info you need. That's great. You'll be able to search by transaction ID, uh -huh. block number, token name, even QR code. So if I wanted to track a specific transaction, yeah. I could just plug in the transaction ID. Right. And all the details would be right there at my fingertips. Exactly. That's really handy. It is. Mm -hmm. They're also integrating CorePass for secure login and KYC, KYB verification. Hold on. KYC, KYB, what are those? KYC stands for know your customer. Okay. And KYB stands for know your business. Got it. It's a way of verifying the identity of people and businesses to prevent fraud and money laundering. So it's about making sure everything is legitimate and secure. Yes. I like that. So how does CorePass fit into all this? CorePass is a secure digital identity platform. It's going to be integrated into the block index, mm -hmm. allowing users to log in securely and verify their identities. Got it. It's all about increasing security and trust in the ecosystem. That's a great feature. So enhanced search. Yeah. Secure login. What else is coming to the block index? Get ready for customizable dashboards. Wow. CSV export functionality. <laughs> Ad-free browsing. And a scam address list. Oh, they're really pulling out all the stops. They are. To make the Block Index a valuable tool for anyone interested in blockchain. Exactly. Customizable dashboards sound amazing. Yeah. Especially for someone like me who likes to see data visually. And CSV export functionality is a dream come true for data nerds. It is. But honestly, that scam address list is probably the most important feature of all. I agree. In any new technology, there will be people trying to take advantage of it. That's true. A reliable scam address list will help users stay safe and avoid getting caught up in scams. It's so important to have those resources to help navigate the complexity of this technology. <laughs> We've covered so much today. We have. From unstoppable payments and ICON settlement to 3D printing, Svelte Kit, the FoxR Dev Toolkit, and the Block Index. It's a lot to process, but it's incredibly fascinating. It really is. It's not just about cool new gadgets and faster payments. Right. It's about a fundamental shift in how we interact with technology and finance. Absolutely. You're right. This is a paradigm shift. So a completely new way of looking at things. But I think we need to take a break now. Sounds good. And let all this information sink in. When we come back, yeah. we'll explore the potential impact of these technologies. What's the bigger picture? How will this revolutionize our lives in the years to come? Stay tuned. It's really amazing to think about the scale of change these technologies could bring. It really is mind-boggling. It's not just about tweaking the existing systems. Yeah. It's about completely reimagining our financial world. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. In the first part, we explored how unstoppable payments and ICON settlement work. Uh -huh. And we even touched on things like 3D printing and those developer tools. Right. But now I want to dive into the potential impact. What's the bigger picture here? How will this change our lives in the coming years? Let's start by thinking about traditional financial institutions. Okay. If more people start using unstoppable payments and decentralized platforms, yep. what happens to banks? 
That's a really good question. Will they adapt and evolve or will they become obsolete? And it's not just banks. Right. It's the whole financial system as we know it. We could be talking about a shift in power from centralized institutions to individuals. Yeah, that's a huge shift. It's both exciting and a little scary, to be honest. It is a big change, but I think it's important to approach these changes with an open mind. I agree. Disruption can be unsettling, but it can also lead to incredible innovation and progress. That's true. Just think about how the internet changed communication and information sharing. Yeah, good point. This could be a similar turning point for finance. I see what you mean. Maybe this move towards decentralization will lead to a fairer financial system, <laughs> one that empowers individuals and communities who haven't always benefited from traditional institutions. That's a very hopeful thought, and it's definitely a possibility worth exploring. Yeah, it is. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Right. There are still a lot of challenges to overcome. For sure. Before we see the full potential of this technology. Definitely. We need to consider regulations. Yes. Yeah security concerns, and the need for widespread adoption. It's kind of like the early days of the internet. Yeah, I see the parallel. Lots of potential, but also a lot of unknowns. And speaking of challenges, yeah, we need to talk about scalability. Ugh. For unstoppable payments to become mainstream, right? the underlying infrastructure needs to handle a massive increase in transactions. That's true. We're talking billions of transactions every day. A lot of transactions. So the blockchain needs to be powerful. Yes. And efficient enough to deal with that kind of volume. It can't be like those websites that crash when they get a surge in traffic. No, it needs to be robust. Right. And that's why all the development work we talked about earlier is so important. Mm -hmm. The teams behind core blockchain are always trying to improve scalability, security, and the user experience. It's good to know that those challenges are being addressed. That's it. Feels like we're heading in the right direction. Hopefully. But while we're on the topic of challenges, yeah. no technology is perfect. Right. Blockchain is no exception. There are still concerns about energy consumption, privacy, and misuse. Those are valid concerns. The energy used by some blockchain networks is definitely something to think about. Yes, yeah, some people have been critical of that but I know developers are trying to make things more efficient. That's right. So what about privacy? Okay. I know blockchain transactions are pseudonymous, mm -hmm. but some people worry that they can still be traced back to individuals. That's a concern that's being taken very seriously. There's ongoing research and development to improve privacy protections. Techniques like zero knowledge proofs and other cryptographic methods are being explored to protect user privacy. It sounds like a lot of effort is going into addressing those concerns, mm -hmm. which is good to hear. But what about the possibility of misuse? Right. We've all heard stories about blockchain being used for illegal things. Unfortunately, that's true. How do we reduce that risk? It's a question that requires a multifaceted answer. Okay. Like any powerful technology, yeah. blockchain can be used for good or bad. We need strong security measures uh -huh. along with regulations and law enforcement efforts to prevent and address criminal activity. So it's not just about the technology itself, right. but also about the legal and ethical framework around it. Exactly. We need a system where blockchain can be used for good uh -huh. while minimizing the risks. It's all about responsible innovation. I like that. And that's where collaboration is so important between developers, regulators, policymakers, and the community. We all need to work together to create a future where this technology is used ethically. Yes. And benefits everyone. Now let's shift gears a bit. Okay. We've been discussing the serious side of blockchain, uh -huh. but it's also a space full of creativity yeah. and innovation. Absolutely. It's easy to get lost in the technical details, mm -hmm. but this technology is also about pushing boundaries yeah. Yeah. and exploring new possibilities. Yeah. And that brings us back to 3D printing. Right. We talked about how it's being used with blockchain mm. and decentralized applications. I'd love to hear more about that. It's a fascinating area with mm -hmm. some really exciting development. So remind me, what are people 3D printing in the blockchain space? Well, as we mentioned, people are printing things like NFC tags, okay. decentralized storage holders, uh -huh. and even cryptube models. Right. But what makes these different is that they're not just physical objects Go because up. they can interact with the blockchain. So we're giving physical objects a digital identity on the blockchain. Yes. That's still so cool to me. It is pretty cool. How does that work in practice? It's about embedding digital information into the physical object. Right. For example, imagine a 3D printed NFC tag mm -hmm. that has a unique identifier 
links to an asset on the blockchain. Okay. When you scan that tag with your phone, yeah. you can access information about that asset, verify its authenticity, or even start a transaction. That's incredible. It's like a physical object coming alive in the digital world. I can see this being used in so many different ways. Supply chain management, uh -huh. art authentication, even interactive games. The possibilities are endless. You're right. The potential applications are huge. Yeah. And constantly growing. And it's not just about embedding information. Okay. We're also seeing devices being developed that can interact with decentralized applications in real time. Can you give me an example? Sure. I'm having trouble picturing that. Imagine a 3D printed sensor that's connected to a decentralized network. Okay. This sensor could collect environmental data, like temperature, humidity, or air quality. It could then send that data to the blockchain, where it could be used for things like environmental monitoring or smart city applications. That's a great example. It shows how 3D printing can connect the physical and digital worlds exactly. in ways we couldn't have imagined before. The line between the two is becoming blurred. I agree. It's about creating a smarter world where physical and digital things interact seamlessly. And it's not just about fancy gadgets. Right. It's about using this technology to solve real world problems. Right. Making things more efficient, okay. more sustainable, and improving our lives. I'm really glad you're starting to grasp the potential of all this. I am. But what are some of the challenges facing this intersection of 3D printing and blockchain? I imagine there are some hurdles to overcome before it becomes mainstream. You're right, there are challenges. One of the biggest is standardization. Good. Right now, there are no widely accepted standards for embedding information into 3D printed objects or creating interoperable devices that can communicate with the blockchain. So it's like everyone is speaking a different language. Yeah, kind of. But people are working on developing industry standards <laughs> as the technology matures. We'll likely see more convergence and interoperability. It just takes time. Yeah. Standardization is key for wider adoption. It is. But what about security? That's a good point. Securing 3D printed objects that are connected to the blockchain must be tricky. Absolutely. Especially if they could be tampered with. Security is always paramount when we're talking about blockchain, and it's even more crucial when we're dealing with physical objects. I see. Think about it. If someone can physically change a 3D printed object, yeah. they could potentially change the data it's sending to the blockchain. That's a scary thought. It is. So how do we prevent that? Well, researchers are looking into various ways to secure these objects. Okay. Things like tamper-proof designs, mm -hmm. embedded security features, and strong cryptographic techniques. So it's about building multiple layers of protection. Exactly. To safeguard the data. It seems like a lot of effort is going into addressing these security issues. It does. Which is good to hear. Let's shift our focus back to the developers. Okay. They are at the forefront of all this innovation. We talked about SvelteKit and the FoxR Dev Toolkit. Yes. But I'd like to learn more about the overall ecosystem for developers building on Core Blockchain. Core Blockchain has a really active developer community oh. and a robust ecosystem of tools and resources to support them. That's great. It's a collaborative hub where developers can connect, learn, and build together. Can you give us a glimpse into what this ecosystem looks like? Sure. What kind of tools and resources are available? Well, Core Blockchain has a comprehensive SDK. SDK. Software Development Kit. Okay. It gives developers everything they need to build, test, and deploy applications on the platform. Or libraries. Yes. APIs, documentation, even sample code to get them started. It's like a one-stop shop for all their development needs. It's like giving them a toolbox filled with everything they need to make their ideas a reality. Exactly. And it's not just about the technical tools, right? Core blockchain also fosters a community yeah. where developers can connect and learn from each other. They have forums, online communities, and even in-person events. Having that support system is so important. It is. Especially when you're working with cutting-edge technology. It's a place to ask questions, get feedback, and find inspiration. And Core Blockchain also organizes hackathons and workshops yes. to encourage innovation and collaboration. It's all about fostering a dynamic and supportive environment. That's fantastic. But what are some of the advantages of building on Core Blockchain specifically? What makes it stand out from other platforms? One key advantage is its focus on security and reliability. Okay. It's built on a strong, well-tested code base. And the team is committed to high security standards. 
So developers can trust that their applications are secure yes. and resistant to attacks. And another advantage is scalability. Right. We've talked about that. Core blockchain is designed to handle lots of transactions, which is important for applications that want to reach a wide audience. That's critical. Scalability is a big challenge in the blockchain world. It is. It's good to know that core blockchain has considered this. And they're also committed to interoperability. Okay. They understand that the future of blockchain is about connecting different platforms. That's a smart approach. Recognizing that collaboration is crucial for success. Exactly. It's not about creating isolated systems, but a connected ecosystem. That's a great way to put it. Where different platforms can work together. I think that's one of the reasons core blockchain is attracting so much interest from developers and innovators. They see it as a platform built for the future. Yes. Secure, scalable, and interoperable. It's exciting to see this ecosystem flourishing. It is. But what about the applications being built on core blockchain? What are some of the most innovative projects on the horizon? One area that's really active is decentralized finance or DeFi. DeFi, I've been hearing that a lot lately. Developers are creating applications that let users borrow, lend, and trade cryptocurrencies without needing traditional financial institutions. So it's like cutting out the middleman. Yeah. And giving people more control over their money. Exactly. It sounds like DeFi has the potential to change the entire financial industry. It does. And core blockchain is well suited for DeFi applications. Right. Because of its security, scalability, and support for smart contracts. Those features are essential for building innovative financial applications. But DeFi is just one part of it. Yes. What other interesting applications are being developed? We're also seeing decentralized marketplaces. Okay. Where people can buy and sell things directly without a central authority controlling everything. That's interesting. It sounds like that could create a fairer and more transparent marketplace. It could. Cutting out the middleman often leads to lower prices yeah. and greater efficiency. Exactly. And these marketplaces aren't just for physical goods. Right. There are platforms for digital content too, where traders can connect with their audience directly yeah. and get paid for their work. That's a big deal for the creative industry. Yeah, artists, musicians, writers, they can all have more control over their work and their earnings. It could change how we think about creating and sharing content. It's amazing. It gives individuals and communities more power to shape their own destinies. I love that. It's about democratizing access and opportunity. But with all this innovation, yeah. what are some of the biggest challenges for developers? What's standing in the way of mainstream adoption? One of the biggest hurdles is user experience. Okay. Blockchain is still pretty new and complicated. It can be intimidating for people who aren't familiar with it. Yeah, definitely. Developers need to make applications that are easy to use, even for people who know nothing about blockchain. That's so important. If these apps are going to be widely adopted, right. they need to be user-friendly. Nobody wants to use a complicated app, no matter how cool the technology is. Another challenge is security. Yes, that's always a top priority. Especially when you're dealing with sensitive data and financial transactions. Developers need to be very careful to protect their applications from attacks. What are some of the best practices for ensuring security? One of the most important things is to write secure code. Okay. Code that doesn't have any vulnerabilities that hackers could exploit. Got it. They also need to test their applications thoroughly and have them audited to make sure they can withstand real world attacks. So it's about testing the code and the whole system. Yeah, exactly. The infrastructure, <laughs> the libraries, Everything. Security is a multifaceted issue. It needs a holistic approach. And it's not a one-time thing. Right. It's an ongoing process. As new threats appear, developers have to adapt and improve their security. It's a constant battle. Yes. But a battle worth fighting. Now let's shift gears one last time. Okay. We've been focusing on the technical aspects. But it's important to remember that technology impacts people. Right. This innovation is driven by individuals and communities. It's a technology with a human element. And that brings us to the topic of community. We talked about it briefly, but I want to explore it further. What makes the blockchain community so special? One thing that makes it unique is its diversity. Okay. It's a global community mm -hmm. with people of all ages, backgrounds, and areas of expertise. It's a melting pot of ideas and perspectives. Yes. And that's incredibly enriching. It sounds really inclusive. It is. Welcoming everyone. And it's not just about diversity. Well, okay. It's about passion. The people in the blockchain space are so passionate about this technology. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that. They really believe in its potential to change the world. Their energy is contagious. It is. 
But passion alone doesn't create a successful community. True. What else makes it thrive? Collaboration. Okay. The blockchain community is incredibly collaborative. People are constantly sharing ideas, working together on projects, and supporting each other. It's a testament to the power of collective intelligence. Absolutely. It's really inspiring. It reminds us that we can achieve amazing things when we work together. And it's not just about technical projects. Okay. This community is also supportive on a personal level. Oh, wow. People are always willing to help. Whether it's answering a question, giving feedback, or just offering encouragement. That's amazing. It's a community that truly cares. It sounds like a true community. It is. So how can someone get involved? What advice would you give to someone who's just starting to explore this space? Be curious. Okay. Explore different aspects of blockchain technology. Read articles, watch videos, listen to podcasts, and go to events. Good advice. The more you learn, the more you'll discover what really interests you. There's a lot of information out there, both online and offline. It's a good way to start. And once you find something that sparks your interest, yeah. connect with other people in the space, yeah. join forums, go to meetups, mm -hmm. and reach out to people on social media. It's about finding people who share your passion. Exactly. And don't be afraid to ask questions. That's important. The blockchain community is very welcoming yeah. and People are always happy to help newcomers. It's a really supportive environment. That's great to hear. Yeah. But even with all the positives, what are some of the biggest challenges facing this community? What needs to change for blockchain to be adopted by the mainstream? One of the biggest challenges is education. Okay. Blockchain is still new and complicated, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. That's true. We need to educate people about what blockchain is, uh -huh. how it works, and its benefits. Education is key yes. to clearing up myths mm -hmm. and fostering understanding. We need to make this technology accessible to everyone, not just tech experts. Absolutely. We need to make blockchain relatable to everyday people. And another challenge is regulation. Okay. The rules for blockchain are constantly changing, which can be difficult for businesses and developers. Yeah, I can imagine. We need clear and consistent regulations that support innovation, but also protect consumers. It's a tough balance to find. It is. Regulation is important, but we don't want to stifle innovation. It's a complex issue that requires collaboration between everyone involved. We've covered a lot in this part of our deep dive. We have. From the potential impact of unstoppable payments and ICANN settlement, to the possibilities of 3D printing in the blockchain world, and the incredible community that's driving all this forward. It's been a really interesting conversation. It has. It's amazing to see how this technology is developing and to think about the future it holds. It's a really exciting time to be following the evolution of blockchain. It is. But I think it's time for a short break. That's good. When we come back, yeah. we'll explore some of the potential risks and ethical considerations and think about what the future might hold for this game-changing innovation. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's been quite a journey exploring the world of unstoppable payments, ICANN settlement, and the wider blockchain ecosystem. We've discussed a lot from the technical details to the potential impact on society. It's been incredible. We've talked about the amazing possibilities like faster payments, greater financial inclusion, the merging of the physical and digital worlds, and the, the rise of this passionate and collaborative community. But just like with any powerful technology, we have to consider the risks and the ethical implications as well. You're absolutely right. We can't just focus on the shiny, exciting parts without thinking about the potential downsides. It's kind of like exploring uncharted territory. There's a sense of wonder and excitement, but we also need to watch out for any dangers that might be lurking in the unknown. Exactly. So let's talk about some of those potential risks. What are some of the unintended consequences of blockchain that we need to be aware of? What keeps you up at night? One concern is the possibility of increased inequality. If not everyone has equal access to blockchain technology and its benefits, it could make existing wealth and opportunity gaps even worse. We don't want to end up in a situation where the rich get richer and the poor are left behind just because they can't access this technology or don't know how to use it. That's a really important point. We've discussed how blockchain can empower individuals, but that empowerment needs to be available to everyone, no matter their economic background or where they live. We need to make sure the benefits of this technology are distributed fairly and that everyone has a chance to participate. Exactly. Another worry is the potential impact on jobs. As blockchain automates certain processes and eliminates the need for intermediaries, it could disrupt traditional industries and cause job losses. 
We've already seen how automation has changed manufacturing and other sectors. We need to start thinking now about how blockchain might change the workforce and how we can prepare people for those shifts. It reminds us that with technological advances often come trade-offs. We need to be smart about managing those transitions and make sure workers aren't left behind. Things like retraining programs, upskilling initiatives, and maybe even new social safety nets might be needed to help those whose jobs are impacted. I think you're on the right track. We need a comprehensive plan that considers both the economic opportunities and the social challenges this technology brings. We can't just ignore the potential downsides and hope they'll fix themselves. Agreed. And while we're talking about challenges, we need to discuss the environmental impact. Although some blockchains are becoming more energy efficient, others still consume a lot of power. If blockchain adoption keeps growing at this rate, what will that mean for our environment? That's a critical question. It's kind of ironic we're talking about a technology that could create a more sustainable and equitable world, but its current energy use raises concerns. Look. It's a bit like driving a gas-guzzling car to a climate change conference. The irony is pretty obvious. You're right. So how do we reconcile this contradiction? What are people doing to lessen the environmental impact of blockchain technology? Well, as you mentioned, some blockchains are switching to energy-efficient methods. For example, there's a shift happening from the energy-intensive proof-of-work model to more sustainable options like proof-of-stake. These newer approaches use way less energy while keeping the blockchain secure and trustworthy. That's encouraging. It seems like the industry is taking these concerns seriously and finding ways to balance technological progress with being responsible towards the environment. It's a major priority. And it's not just about changing to better systems. Developers are also looking at other solutions like using renewable energy to power blockchain operations and making more efficient hardware. That's fantastic. It just shows that innovation can happen in many different areas. It's not just about improving the software, but also rethinking the hardware and the infrastructure that supports this technology. Precisely. It's a challenge that needs a system-wide approach. Now let's move on to the social and ethical side of blockchain. As we rely more and more on it for things like identity, reputation, and data management, what if those systems are compromised or biased? What can we do to make sure these systems are fair, transparent, and accountable? That's a really important question. You're right, we might be putting too much trust in these decentralized systems. We need to make sure they're built with fairness, transparency, and accountability in mind. We shouldn't just trust these systems without understanding how they work and any potential biases in their design. Exactly. And it's not just about intentional bias. Unintentional bias can happen too, especially with complicated algorithms and massive amounts of data. It's like the saying, garbage in, garbage out. If the data used to train these systems is biased, the results will be biased too. I like that analogy. We have to be very careful about data quality, algorithmic transparency, and the potential for bias, both intentional and unintentional. And we need ways for people to challenge decisions made by these systems if they think they've been treated unfairly. It sounds like we need to come up with a whole new set of ethical guidelines and principles for this technology. Focusing only on the technical side isn't enough. We have to tackle the ethical questions too. I absolutely agree. This needs to be a conversation across different fields, technology, ethics, law, sociology, and more. We need to hear from different perspectives to make sure this technology is developed and used in a way that benefits all of us. That's a powerful thought. And it leads us to another potential risk misuse. Like any technology, blockchain can be used for bad things. Yeah. We've already seen cases of blockchain being used for money laundering, ransomware attacks, and other illegal activities. How can we minimize this risk without stopping innovation? It's a tricky balance. We want to encourage new ideas and help this technology grow, but we can't ignore the possibility of it being used for harmful purposes. It's like giving someone a powerful tool. You hope they use it for good, but you also know it could be used to cause harm. So how do we find that balance? It's a multi-pronged approach. It involves education, making sure people understand the risks and how to protect themselves. It requires strong security, making it harder for criminals to exploit these systems. And it needs regulation and law enforcement, creating laws that discourage illegal activity and hold those who abuse this technology accountable. It's a complicated issue, but one we can't ignore. We have to be proactive in addressing these risks if we want blockchain technology to reach its full potential and benefit society as a whole. I couldn't agree more. It's a shared responsibility that needs collaboration across different sectors. I think we've explored a lot in this last part of our deep dive. 
We've discussed the potential downsides and ethical considerations of blockchain technology and talked about the challenges we need to overcome to make sure this technology is used responsibly and benefits everyone. It's been a really thought-provoking conversation. Blockchain technology has incredible power to bring change, but it's up to us to guide that change and make sure it creates a better future for everyone. That's a great point to end on. It's been an incredible journey learning about unstoppable payments, ICANN settlement, and the whole world of blockchain. We've seen the amazing potential of this technology, but we've also recognized the challenges and responsibilities that come with it. I've really enjoyed our discussion. It's always inspiring to delve into complex subjects like this and think about the future we are creating together. To all our listeners, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you've gained a better understanding of blockchain technology and the conversations we need to be having as we explore this new frontier. Remember, the future of blockchain is being written right now, and we all have a part in shaping it. Keep learning, stay informed, and stay involved. And until next time, keep exploring new ideas.